Right. Thanks, Audrey. Yep. Hey, so is it on? Which oh, sorry. Oops. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oops. Okay. Hope everyone can hear me. So you had a good afternoon tea and coffee, I guess? Feel energetic or feeling sleepy? How's the mood in the room right now? Everyone's like super energetic. Like give it, like put your hands up and like let's let's just <laughs> reflect ourselves a bit, right? Except Woo. Woo. Louder, louder. I want like to hear bigger noise. Like I know Singaporeans can make a lot of noise, though, right? So let's show it. <laughs> we have some Sydney siders sitting in front, like so we need to show like how powerful like the Singaporean crowd is. <laughs> let's do a big Yeah, let's do a bigger one, right? Like say, Woo! Woo! Okay, so I think we got a pretty energetic room right now, so that's good. So let's get into the topic. So I'm going to talk about building CLI apps in Go. This is supposed to be a lightning talk, so it's kind of light. And if you, <laughs> so th there won't be a lot of technical, like I, I won't dig deep into technical details. So this is something like you can like just eavesdrop on a few things and then like you can take some stuff back home and like like it, you can apply them back in your workplace or in, as in a hobby so that's the idea and also like if in case if you're wondering like I'm originally Sri Lankan so that's why I'm like I might have a weird accent so if things are not clear bear with me <laughs> right so So I, I used, I still blog at lovetech.com. I used to blog about Go back in the day. I haven't really blogged much about Go these days. Uh, yeah, there's, there should be like a lot of posts back, uh, back in the day. And then uh, my Twitter is like lovetech. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, as mentioned in the introduction, I previously worked at Nitrous in Singapore, where we did quite a lot of Go at that time, like around 2014. Like we were like one of the first companies in Singapore to adopt Go, and then I think along with Wiki and a few others, like we were the first ones to adopt Go in Singapore. And then like I kind of still remember when we started the first Go first meetup. It was a very small audience. We were like we had like a small office, like a small loft in like Chinatown, and. We could be fit in like 10, 15 people, and then like the turnout for the first meetup was like 50 people, and we were super amazed. Like even though there wasn't many people using Go, and there was, we could see like there's an enthusiasm in the country building up, and it's quite like coming back after like a couple of years and see this audience. It's quite amazing to see how things has progressed in the last couple of years. So, and then I actually worked at Atlassian as well. Um, I, I worked in their growth team and like the data science and growth team, and also I then involved in like platforms like building a new platform in Atlassian where I, I use certain bit of Go. Uh, and now actually doing my own startup where I use quite a lot of Go as in for like backend services and also to deal with few like front facing cloud customer facing uh, interfaces with Go. So that's where the CLI topic comes up. The product I'm building is still in like stillet mode. So if you see this mascot in future in Hacker News or in Product Hunt, remember me and like be really prepared to give like an upvote. Uh, the product is called <laughs> Pragma, and you will probably get to hear more about it in the coming weeks and in months. So just remember the mascot for now, and also give me like a good name or like a nickname for this guy. <laughs> So, so before diving into the topic, right? Like, so how many of you actually use Go in your workplace, like as a professional language? Yeah. So, like half of the room. So, th th I can see like there are others who still doesn't get the chance to like actually use Go within their workplace. So, what I'm kind of trying to do here is to give you like a 
like a bait you can plant within your teams and like go back and like introduce go to your teams. So CLIs are like a good way to like sneak go into your tech stack. So why you should build a CLI in the first place? Like before getting into like why you go to build CLIs, let's talk about why you want to build a CLI. So CLIs are like if you are if you are like it's that there are very few companies or like if you I think very few people get to like build CLIs and get paid for it, like unless you're like working on Linux or like an open uh, like an Ubuntu like distribution, like maybe Canonical had the chance to like work exclusively on CLIs. But in most of the today's context, I think most products are like web phasing. So like the chances of actually using a CLI is minimal or like building a CLI to release to customers are minimal. So but CLIs like the command line interfaces has its own benefits, right? Like, our first case, it's great to do like MVPs. Say, for example, you, you're, you're, you're in the back end team and you come up with a few services. Now you have done the services, but then you, your front end team has to deal with all these wars between React versus Angular or like React versus Ember. And like, they have to make those decisions and then like also choose with TypeScript versus Flow and those things. So, while they're busy with like figuring out the right front end stack, you can actually put the product in front of the customers through like just building a CLI application. Like you can come up with a CLI interface for your service, right? And then like release that to the customer. So that's precisely what we did as our first private beta for Pragma. So rather than actually wasting time on building a front end, or like proper front end application, we came up with a CLI and tested it with few customers. And it turned out to be great. Like we got a lot of good feedback. So CLIs are like think don't think CLIs as like the old school Linux way of doing things. Think of it as a way like you can bridge the gap, like bring your products to the customers easily. So it's great for like MVPs, gain some quick wins. And also another interesting and like a common use case for CLIs are like to use as like internal dev tools, like streamlining those internal processes. Like if you're working like ops teams or in like data science teams, you might probably have few scripts and, and then like some documentation written in some wiki which haven't been updated and like every single day or week like you get someone coming to you and asking oh, how to run this script and like you just and then some and you might also like copy some script and try to run it and then you realize like it's out of date. So there's a high chance of like dealing with those kind of workflow issues. So CLI is like again a building and like releasing a CLI is a good way of like eliminating those risks and like the, uh, avoiding those uh, like productivity downfalls within the team. And it's kind of a good way to like build like uh, like a better internal uh, workflow. So that's that's another like a good reason. Like if you want to pitch to a manager next day, like oh, we need a CLI. That's like one of the good uh, like a pitch you can have. And also, obviously, like if you don't really have like a opportunity at work, you can still build CLI for your like personal use or like for fun, right? So it's a good way of like if you just want to like if you're here for the GopherCon for the first time and you're super thrilled about the language and after hearing all these amazing talks, you want to try like get your hands dirty, like build a CLI app. I think probably you can do it within a weekend, like come up with something simple, like right? build a CLI application to like come up with this ordering Singaporean coffee or like tell a dad joke. So this is actually like all these three apps are real apps I have built. So <laughs> <laughs> so tell a dad joke is works like it's it came up like when we were doing a pair programming with my colleague and then it's kind of like it gets boring, right? Like so once in a while we just run this CLI come on like tell tell dad joke and you get like a random dad joke from somewhere. <laughs> so like it's like very simple things, but like it can make the mundane processes a bit more interesting. And yeah, like so, think of those kind of scenarios as well. How you can utilize like this opportunity. So next, we come to the question. So one, once you have convinced your team to like build a CLI, well now you then like the next meeting would be probably figuring out which language is the best or like which like uh, framework or whatever you want to use for your CLI, right? And then everyone would come up with their pet language, or like the, like they would bet for your, they would bet for their favorite language. So you need to have some solid arguments why Go is the most perfect language, and it is the 
perfect language in my opinion and you will see why is it the best language to write CLI applications. So before jumping into that, like a bit of an history, like so Heroku, they do have like a Heroku tool belt. Probably most of you have, if you have used Heroku, you might have used this like tool belt, right? That's, this is a CLI application you download and install, which allows you to do certain stuff on Heroku. So this was written in Ruby and you can see like most of the issues, like it comes up with things like there's error updating CLI on Windows, and like so if you, like even then there's like login issues on Mac OS. So you will see like if you look at most of the issues, or if you have used it for a while, like you realize a lot of these issues comes from like supporting multiple environments and multiple architectures. So Heroku made the decision to like switch to Go because they want to ship to like multiple OSs and architectures and that has worked perfectly for them. So that's one of the biggest reasons you must consider Go because it's, if you want to target, like if you're building a CLI, you probably want, to, like most people would have like different configurations and operating systems and you might want to support all of them. And to do that easily, Go is probably the best choice because you can build a like single distribution for like each, targeting each architecture and OS. So that's one of the main reasons. And then the other one, like when, when you use like other scripting languages like Node or Python, you also tie, uh, tie with the runtime dependency where you need to like have the modules come with like uh, some form of a repository of the language itself. Like in Python's case, it's pip. Like so this is the AWS CLS. They actually use Python for their CLI. And one of the issues they have is like they now, they have to also give support to like pips issue, right? Like every time like someone tries to use the AWS CLI, they might run into issues with pip, the Python's package manager. So because, and then people need to have like Python also installed in their machines to like use AWS CLI. So it kind of has like a coupling with the language runtime. So go with Go, we kind of avoid this with static binaries. So there won't be like run, no runtime dependencies where since you can actually build a static binary, which you can run on like different architectures without having to have like pre-request installations of packages or anything. So these are like two big reasons why you should consider Go as your language of choice for when it comes to CLI. And now uh, let's see where we can get started with this. So. Uh, so when, when we jump into something new, right, like, to, like in this case, like building a CLI, like what would be the first instinct would be to like search to, like, like you would go to Google and search like how to build a CLI in Go, right? But if you do that, what you get is like some outdated blog posts and then like there would be like few CLI frameworks. I would say not to jump into those, like avoid frameworks at, first as uh, if possible, and then also most of the problem with the blog post you would find is like most of them are outdated or uh, you might really not get much, like uh, you won't get like a proper sense of how to do it, how to do this in the real world. So my suggested approach or like how to like conquer this problem is to like look at the prior art, how others have done this, which is a great way of like learning how to code like when you, when you want to build something, like go and see like who else has done the same thing and how they have approached the problems, right? It, it also it allows you to like understand things like, like even in blog posts or like even in my talk, you would hear like tidbits, but you won't understand how to structure your code or like what are the patterns to like, uh, like use within your code base. So it's good to like look at one of these examples. Like my favorite ones are like, as I mentioned, Heroku, like Heroku has their CLI re rewritten in Go, and also HashiCorp has like a lot of tools built in Go, and then uh, Docker has their Mobi written in Go, and then like I think the, the most favorite one is like the Upspin, which is like written by the masters themselves. So check out these ones; it's pretty amazing to like understand how things work. And I just realized I only have like 20 seconds, so <laughs> so I think. That's like if I give some message to you, like it would be like explore on the projects and then figure out how to like build a CLI application. And I think I will do, just do the rest of the stuff as a blog post. 
And like, I guess there's nothing much from this point onwards. So if you get that original message, like try uh, go and try to build a CLI with Go. Please do that. And I think I'm going to stop. Thank you. Questions? All right, let's have the next speaker.